my intention was very simple, was to, to know God, to know my divinity and to understand it more deeply. And, um, and also I was channeling Isis at the time I, I had a lot of, and, and Isis, the goddess, <laughs> I had a lot of interactions with, um, with her and, and her being, and she'd come through in a lot of ways. So uh, I also wanted to deepen my connection with with her, with Isis. And so I went into that experience and the first thing that happened was I, and I write about this in The Love You Crave in my book, but I was embodied by Isis. It was not, it was not channeling. This was, I was her, like I experienced with the seahorse. I was her. She came into me and then I was her. And I sat up. And I started yelling as Isis, I had a staff and I was standing above where I could see the grid work. It was so large that I was standing in the grid work of the earth. The crystalline blueprint of the earth was in front of me. And I called my people and I put down my staff and I called and I said, um, the words that I said were, I am Isis, hear my call, Lemuria, Andromeda. This is our world. And I I express like it is time to take back our world, claim it. And I, as I'm yelling and I'm, I'm seeing my voice go across the earth, across the grid work of the earth. And I see these people standing up with their swords dressed as warriors and, and, and light bearers. And they're like, you know, I could see who all of them that are with me. It, let's take back our world. This is our world. We are reclaiming it, claim it. And then I started yelling, birth it. And in birth it, it was um, like, really, we, it takes our consciousness and our hearts and are coming together to birth this new world together. Birth it. And I was, as I was yelling, birth it over and over, I exploded. So my, as Isis, I exploded into Christ consciousness and became one with the divine, with God. And then I knew myself as God. I was God. There was no separation. And all was, I was conscious that I am and all is one and that I was all of it. And it was such a powerful experience of oneness and just, and, and, and Isis was gone. You know, everything was gone. It was just this consciousness of knowing itself, just being. And, and then I started to experience it as visual. And it's kind of like, you know, when you see the eye of God or the eye of, what are they, what's it called? I think it is the eye of God in the cosmos when they show that picture. It's kind of like that, but it was all blue for me, but I was it and like wow. swirling around. It was really incredible. And then as the medicine wears off, th thoughts started to come in. And so I started to have the thoughts, but what about my children? And suddenly I was conscious of having children. And then I would just see them in the swirl like, oh, but it's all me. But what about my, you know, what about my parents? Oh, it's all me. What about my friends? My, what about my work? Oh, it's all me. It's all part of this. And then as the medicine dropped away, uh, I started to come back and I started to get really confused. So I, um, I was put in a chamber, one of those beautiful little holding chambers. It was met by a, a, a Pleiadian man. Um, and he put me in this periwinkle chamber to rest and integrate. And then um, really come back. I, would, I, I went into a moment of confusion where I didn't know who I was because Washela was gone. There was no, the, the ego's gone in that experience. There is no me or Washela. There's just I am. And there was no Isis. I'm like, wait, wait. I remember I was Isis. I remember I was somebody. I remember I am God. Who am I now? What am I? You know, and there's this like confusion of the mind trying to grasp what it just experienced. So there was a, a, a time of just peaceful integration where I sat there with it and then was coming back to my body and starting to feel again. And so that ended that experience, but it didn't end the experience, you know, it continued. And then it was a couple of years later, I found myself in a situation where um, it was actually the man that I said had the, the possibility of embodying my twin flame. It was, it was a bufo ceremony that where it would happen and um, where the, the integration would happen. And I set it all up, had a shaman come to the house. He was there. I was there. The shaman was there. And um, he's like, he backed out. He's like, I can't do this. 
Um, but, wow. but, you know, but he let me do it. And so I'm like, well, I guess it's for me. I guess this is for me then. This is all for me to have this experience. So, um, and I hadn't done the dieta. I hadn't, you know, like I wasn't, I didn't know I was going to be doing it. So, but it didn't matter. None of that mattered. So I, I said, and it was a beautiful woman shaman this time, but I asked her, or I, she asked me, what is your intention? And I said, I want to experience more. I want to expand and experience more than I ever have before. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> because this one was completely different, but it's like that I, I rocketed beyond my, my consciousness. It's not like rocketed out of body because body just, you forget that you have a body. You forget that you have, uh, you know, I, I wasn't Washela, but my consciousness expanded immediately just blew right through the realm of God that I had experienced previous, previously, way past that, just right through it. And I hadn't really contemplated that happening before. And then uh, very, very, very rapidly, I experienced all of creation from first moment of creation. This is not just my creation. This is all of creation from first moment of creation to the complete climax or completion of creation, which culminated in nothingness, total black nothingness, complete. I mean, you can't explain it because there's nothing, a complete nothingness. And without consciousness, my consciousness left then there was nothing left for me to experience. And fortunately, I had the shaman because I don't know, you know, how that would have happened, what I would have done without her. But she had a Koshi chime and she played that Koshi chime at that moment. And some part of my consciousness was able to find that sound, pick up that sound and like kind of grab it and follow it. And so I followed that sound back into my body, but I didn't just come back into my body. I went back through in reverse order, all of creation from, from completion to beginning and then landed, like dropped into my body. And I was between dimensions at that point. That all happened so rapidly in 10 minutes, she said, or 15 minutes, that all happened. And I was back in my body and my eyes were open, but I was also still in other dimensions. So I was seeing her high self. Oh my gosh. And just the beauty, everything in the room was so full of life and color and vibrance and her, her I mean it was just so beautiful I couldn't see myself I wasn't even aware really of myself but I I wasn't wasn't at the same time um all of my guides were there with me I I came in I came back with new guides and um and I could see them and feel them and it was just such an amazing incredible experience but then my body had to integrate that and that was that was difficult and I went through a lot of convulsions and and uh and then my mind trying to grasp everything that I had just experienced was was a lot for my mind to hold. So there, you know, it was the experience itself was 45 minutes or so, but it was a year and a half it took me to integrate that second experience. And same probably took me about the same with the first one, but it was much more pleasant with just going to God. That was lovely. Going, you know, way beyond that as I did took a lot more. And so there was an integration. I woke up that night. Um, it was full moon and uh, that's when you know, the moon beckoned, told me to come outside and I laid outside under the moonlight and I started just heaving and sobbing and crying and, and releasing all of this grief and clearing all of this grief. And I understood this is the grief of being human, of being embodied, of being captured in this container. Like, a, like you know, think of it like a, a firefly being caught in a jar um, but knowing that all of that is out there, but it's stuck in this jar, you know, it's felt like the grief of and the terror even of becoming human from a soul perspective, um, grieving that for hours and then let, like finally being over that. And then I was afraid to sleep for a long time because I would go back to that point of nothingness and I didn't know if I'd be able to come back. And I had to integrate that fear. What if I don't like get, get clear, get surrender to, okay, if it's my time, then I won't. And if it, you know, if it's not my time, then I'll stay. And that took a lot for me to come to terms with. All of that took a lot to come to terms with. Integrating all of that was a lot. And that's why I think so, you, people need to be very, very careful about how they go into this and what your intention is. I got what I asked for both times very clearly. Um, 
I, I think set up your intention and your mind to be able to handle what you're going to receive and treat it as sacred and have a shaman, someone sit with you who will mind you and help you through the process. It's a rebirth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 